guys! Welcome back to Let's Play Xeno Years. Last time, we went through pretty much as much as we could, including going over the uh, opening video again to try and explain this whole process about what's exactly happened since basically planet, uh, humans arrived on this planet 10,000 years ago. With all of that said, if you guys are still confused, you know, you can either send me a, uh, like an ask or something like that, or uh, post comment, whatever you want to do, send me mail. Um, if there's a lot of confusion, um, I might consider doing a Twitch stream. I don't normally do that, but uh, I would consider it if enough people have questions and they just kind of want me there to talk candidly instead of, you know, going through and trying to find all the answers ahead of time so that I can, you know, post the appropriate comment or say the appropriate thing on the video or whatever. That's up to you guys. Uh, let me know, comments and all that. Anyway, with that being said, we are back to this scene after watching the intro movie again. And this happens after we kind of have Faye explain things to us right at the kind of the point where Zohar landed. Anyway. We destroy Zohar, we win! And something else happens. Can't remember what. I think the boss wins too. Yeah, that whole process of we need to do what the boss of the game wants us to do and what the good guy wants us to do, but it's only slightly different. So, yeah, it's still confusing. Hard to say what exactly they were going for with that, but anyway. The Zohar, unfortunately, is also the source of our ether power and make the uh, generators of the power of the gears work. So, as soon as we destroy it, uh, basically when they say control any potential phenomena there, they're basically saying it's this um, perpetual energy machine. So it can basically do anything. Uh, I'm not sure how they work this. Basically, I guess this Zohar modifier taps into the power of the wave existence, and of course, since the wave existence might as well be God, it can basically do anything. I guess that's the idea. Now, the Seraph Angels. Now, of course, Seraph means angel. Uh, it's probably a specific uh, type of angel or specific uh, cast, case, whatever that word is. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't really look into it, but I Seraph basically means angel, so again, redundancy. I think, it was it Malik Angels from before? Uh, was also meaning angels, Malik meaning angels, so... Again, they love the redundancies. But in this case, the Seraph Angels was mentioned exactly one time, and it was only recently, basically, uh, when all this stuff happened and Faye went into to follow after Deus before recombining himself. We had Satan sitting in the chair, and he actually talked about this briefly before we went into flashback mode. But yeah, so that's the basic thing. These Seraph Angels are kind of like Deus's um, army that he sends forth to do whatever he needs them to do. Close enough. But there is a downside. Yeah. As I was saying before I got distracted, as soon as we take down the Zohar, we will no longer have ether powers or be able to use our gears at all. And yes, they, they do a nice thing here, consider they've only mentioned the Seraph Angels in like a single line of dialogue, and it was when Satan was in the chair. They decided it's probably a good idea to explain these things, where they came from, what they are. I'm assuming they look like angels, but at the same time, they don't always look like angels. Okay. Human consciousness. Well, it's not the principle of uncertainty, is it? Is there an actual principle under that name? There probably is, but uh, then it would probably be capitalized. And here's me nitpicking again. Yeah, well, it happens. In other words, the angels are, yeah, they basically Satan gibber, and then, in other words, English, uh, I believe that the angels are incarnations of the spirits of people that uh, have been absorbed by Deus. So yeah, all the people that have been absorbed into his body, which is of course what Deus is trying to do, he's trying to reform the body that he once had, 
And, of course, to do that, not only does he want the body, but he wants all elements of the Zohar and all this other stuff. Basically, he wants to be omnipotent and basically God. That's what he was kind of programmed to do. That would actually make a bit of sense. But of course, Satan just blows that out of the water. And for some reason, they don't have these intentions. I don't know how he knows this. But... The creations of God will someday be a hindrance. That is why they must be eliminated. That is why Merkaba is being used to begin such destruction. But Deus is not following its programming of exterminating all civilization. The Seraphs, which are weapons, I don't know why they love the term terminal interface weapons, but they do, are using their bodies composed of nanomachines to absorb massive numbers of people, regardless of whether they are dead or alive. It's not discriminating between mutant and non-mutant people, highly peculiar. The fact that the people who are meant to be destroyed are being taken in as well. It's the absolute opposite of what it is supposed to be doing, and to an extent that's kind of true, but not exactly. Aside from the bodies, of course, we already know why it won't need additional parts, because it has nano machines, and it can change any material into parts. Those intentions, Krellian has called Deus the Mother. I don't remember when he did this, but he probably did. So many lines of dialogue in this game, it's impossible to remember them all. So if Deus, or God in this case, is the Mother, then the motives are coming from the Great Mother. What they're referring to is they're referring to this original... Um, the original female, the original Ellie, the original Myang, when they were still one being. And that's basically what's happened now that Myang has come to possess Ellie's body again. So that's why it's such an important change now that they've basically re-merged themselves. And yeah, basically what they've done here is uh, Ellie and Myang together went into the... into Deus and basically became enveloped and absorbed into it. But now, Satan is posing that they are acting as the mother to Deus being the child. Now, if you remember the last episode there, we talked about the fact that, uh, maybe it was the last episode, could have been the one before, who knows. Been a few days since I got to record, so. Uh, but when the contact was, er, sorry, when the wave existence was speaking to Faye about his original, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Original contact, for lack of a better term, with each other way back when, 10,000 years ago. The one feeling that Faye, or the child that looks like Faye, had at that point was a longing for its mother, which is why uh, through uh, some other means that they haven't explained yet, uh, not Deus, uh, the wave existence basically created uh, this single entity, this Miang, Ellie, hybrid, whatever you want to call it. And at that point, that was the mother. And because, you know, his will being influenced by the contact, the wave existence being influenced by Little Faye, uh, he had that desire for his mother. And so that became part of his will, which then, if you remember, they all got all these different aspects of the wave existence got switched or separated, sorry. And the will, that will of the mother influenced by the contact, was put into Ellie, this being that was created. And that is probably why they have this mother thing going on at this point. Long story short. Yeah, it's definitely from Ellie. Either way, it doesn't change the fact that we have to fight. I'm reminded of a certain movie with fight in the name. This is your first night, you have to fight. Anyway. Can we do it?
this secret battleship Excalibur? Do I really need to explain to you what Excalibur is? Holy Sword, Arthur, Legend of Arthur, Sword in the Stone. Um, I don't know. Go watch Fate's Day Night. <laughs> and the military potential of all surface forces here will be assembling here, I guess. Yeah, the ship that they're on is named the Excalibur. In fact, it's the Excalibur II, I believe, technically. They never mention this, but the very first Excalibur was the one that Sophia crashed into Solaris way back when. So yeah, apparently the Merkaba has an ultra-long-range cannon that can basically annihilate everything. It's like the uh, history eraser button, or I don't know. What's what's the name of the, the cannon that they had in Star Wars? The, the first one in New Hope. Not the other first one. That one sucks. Nobody needs to talk about that thing in there. Anyway, on top of that, they have a barrier around the perimeter that nullifies all attacks. So basically, they have uber-powerful gun and unbeatable defenses. We're fucked! Simple as that. Can we go home now? Oh, right, we are home. We have nowhere to go to. We're screwed. We're basically all gonna die. So apparently this is some days, weeks, months, whatever, uh, after all of these events uh, that we saw in the last episode for some reason. I, I don't really know. They never really mention it. But we still know we have to save Ellie. We still know that we haven't been able to get close um, in previous attempts. But, uh, yeah. Basically, they're his army. And, yes, they've identified here that they are basically as strong as an Omnigear, which tells you what enemies will be fighting. They even have a new element. Uh, you know, we've had, like, electrical, and we've had gel, and we've had all these other different elements that are really weird, especially in gear form. Now we have angel-type attacks, and we'll get angel-type armor as well, which will be potentially important depending on how you build your characters. And of course they have the regenerability of nanomachines, which makes sense. What? Mm, looks like somebody was doing their job. Zinodirus has mutagenically evolved due to its contact with the Zohar. Some of these scientific concepts, they just kind of throw way up in the air. It's like, um, that one hit over there. We'll use that. Basically, yeah, the, uh, the concept of a, a nanomachine that creates things out of everything now we have a reverse of that. Yeah, the original nanomachines were assemblers, if you remember the start of Disc 2. They create matter to repair with. The disassemblers have the ability to dismantle or destroy matter, which, again, kind of doesn't really work with laws of science, but okay. Well, at least the concept is really cool in the fact that we really need something like that. Just how are we going to deal with the Merkaba? Can't even get close. Well, actually, is there a way to do a perfect defense? I was thinking about that when I went over this scene the other day, but I don't really know if you could do a perfect defense. I know they have that concept in JRPGs, but I'm not sure if you could technically do it. It'd be interesting to see. Man, well, Anyway, gun requires 1.2 second interval to reload after shooting. Uh, only a small section, but the portion of the barrier, of course, needs to be open to let the uh, power out. Therefore, there is a 1.87 second delay. How they figured this out, I don't know. Uh, excuse me. Coughing fit today. And let's see here. Basically, the idea here 
is that time, that 1.8 second delay before the barrier reforms, is our, our kind of our point. And then there's lots of sci-fi mumbo jumbo that uh, would sound really logical and make a whole lot of sense if they said it on Star Trek, but that's only because they would have a great analogy to compare it to. But, uh, yeah. We have no such long-range cannon. Unfortunately, I've taken way too long to get through this uh, dialogue here because I was explaining some stuff from before, but there's pretty much this whole episode will be us figuring out what to do next, which I guess is good in the sense that we need to know what to do next, but it takes a little longer than I would have liked to head in here. And of course, we're going to be relying on BART strategy, which means suicide mission. Yes, Billy is right. Suicide mission. All right, let's go. I don't know. It seems to work in every other JRPG where we try a solution that should never work. Then again, that works in other video games as well. Uh, anime, movies, TV shit. Never mind. It's just a plot device. All right. So the Yggdrasil 4 was that super godly one near the start of disc 2 that had 99,999 HP that we fought with exactly one time and then forgot about. Yeah, it's uh, it's still here, and apparently it, as well as the Excalibur, are equipped with uh, very similar barriers. How long will such a barrier last? About 20 seconds. Yeah, I think we're hooped. Only if the generator is at full drive, which means you can only get those numbers if you sacrifice all other output and propulsion. So basically, you could have a shield for 20 seconds, but you can't go anywhere. Yeah. No, we're going to go with, in with guns blazing, hoping we're going to win. Still not going to help, though. What are you babbling about? You're confusing me, too. Yeah. With one... You're going to use both. So, if we use both of them together, we have more time. We still have the problem of propulsion, though. Yeah. Bart, do you actually have a plan that you've thought out? I'm confused here. You never have a plan that you've thought out. Hell, you've even got slides prepared. Transform the Yggdrasil into assault mode, load it on the Excalibur, couple of the generators. Okay, so we've got the, the barrier going up front. Reduce energy usage down to just supporting the hull of the ship and generating the barrier. Okay. Shift the barrier to full front, obviously, focus on a single point, because you're not going to need guards from the back against the non-existent cannons back there. And since we're only really worried about this main strike... Okay, so we make the barrier with the Excalibur generator. During that time, we'll install on the, so the large solid rockets we got from the ruins of the Mass Driver. This, of course, was the place where Ellie and Satan and Emeralda went that we never really got to see, so I guess this plot point was cut and they just kind of left the information in there. Or at least going there and talking about it was cut, because they never really mentioned anything about that. Maybe those were the rockets they used. I thought there was something specific in the mass driver that they used to get all of the, uh, the nano machines into the air, but maybe it was these rockets. I really don't know. They didn't go over that in a lot of detail. And when the Excalibur's barrier expires, we'll set up the uh, Yggdrasils. And we'll detach the solid rockets and shift the Excalibur into conventional flight. Okay. Yeah, so we can block the attack, and then it's defenseless, but we won't have any power left to do anything. 
So you're basically going on a suicide mission. You're going to jam your ship into its cannon. How is that going to go over well? Less than a second? How are we going to make this work? You're going to shoot the Yggdrasil 4? We could probably one-shot everybody with that gear. The, uh, the Yggdrasil 4 actually has a completely unique um, engine. You can't possibly get that even with the best engine in the game. Um, you can get up to that amount of power in an engine, but not that amount of fuel. I think it had 9,000 fuel. So, yeah. So our plan is still basically a suicide mission. But, at the same time, this requires a whole bunch of timing and a whole bunch of luck. Otherwise, we're basically boned. Sounds like something that would make a whole lot of sense. You two know each other well enough to know how the other would be responding to things. Will you lend us your only battleship? Yet yeah, no, not if you're going to go destroy things. Or, sure, why not? Yeah. Oh yeah. One minor mishap, and the situation there could run out of barrier power before our arrival. Basically, yeah. Oh yeah, right. All those angels? Yeah, I think we kind of overthought, we didn't really think that one through. Oh yeah, we have Omni Gears, right. Yeah, logic. So, that's part of the plan. Thanks, we're depending on you. I can't remember how long this cutscene goes, but I know I don't have time for the other cutscenes that come after it, so that's all for this episode of Let's Play Xenogears. Next time, we'll see if Bart's plan kills everyone or only some of us. That's all for this one, and I'll see you guys next time.